Miss Vizard. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Um, I am a singer songwriter. I play the guitar, I write music, and I sing. <laughs> All right, very uh, concise. I like it. <laughs> What's your uh, musical style if you um, if you're stuck in an elevator with a music executive and you need to sell yourself with an elevator pitch? Oh, I'd stress out, and then I'd say, uh, I guess I would be along the lines of indie pop, uh, more relaxed pop, not bubblegum pop. Um, Maybe a mix of um, if Maggie Rogers wrote with Taylor Swift, um, and then they just chilled it out a little bit. Okay. That kind of thing. Are those your influences or inspirations in particular? Uh, Taylor Swift, no. Although in terms of how she's handled her music career, you have to give her kudos. Um, but I definitely like Maggie Rogers. But I, I get it depends what day it is. It depends what mood I'm in. Um, on the way here, I was listening to Tom Mish's mix, uh, mixtape Beat 2, I think it's what it's called, okay. album on the way here. Just didn't want to listen to any voices. I just wanted to listen to, like, music. Uh, it just, yeah, it just depends. But definitely more the relaxed kind of music that has soul to it. That's my, tends to be my go-to listening uh, music. Cool. Um, what have you done so far? You mentioned before we went on here that you've been... You quit your job five years ago? Full time. time. Yeah. I still have to work to get pay the bills, but yeah. So what happened five years ago that made you decide? And what's what have you done in those five years since you've stopped working full time? Uh, so it actually, in university, was when I realized I wanted to do music. But I was halfway through my degree, and I thought it would be stupid to do give out the degree because then I knew I could earn money after the degree mm -hmm. to pay for all the music stuff until I sort of had more people believing in me to fund me. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened yet. I'm still funding myself, but it's okay. Um, so then once I paid off my university debt was when I gave up my job. Um, so I've just been funding myself and networking, meeting people. Um, you, know, you know, it's always one of those things where like, oh, you meet this person, they put you in touch with this person, and all of a sudden you find you've got this massive, amazing network of um, musician friends and producers and photographers and um, it just sort of builds from there it's all about networking really not, not and not on purpose but just by circumstances putting yourself in the position where you can connect with other artists of whatever kind that they are other creatives mm -hmm. um, so yeah cool what um, in terms of releases and, and live performances what are the highlights so far um, well I released my first EP two years ago mm -hmm. which was great to have something out there um, and then I released a song uh, on May 24th so just just over three weeks ago now uh, called Hurricane uh, and for me that's because it's been two years since I released something because life happened and you know stuff gets in the way and then finally to release something um, especially something that I'm really proud of um, and that has gotten really good response uh, from people it's been really exciting um, yeah. What's the story behind the single? Uh, so almost a year ago, June 25th, 2018, I was in a bad accident um, and my leg got broken really badly. Um, I had to have surgery, still have to have surgery because it's still not right. Um, and that period of time where I was stuck at home, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk on my leg. I had to rely on people to like get me food, help me shower. Um, it was a journey. And uh, I guess that's what the song is about. It's about feeling let down and alone in a time when you really needed it, even though people were there. But it was how I felt. And the ex being able to express that and have people to interpret it the way that they need to interpret it when they listen to it. Um, it's really nice. Cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what's uh, what's going to happen now that you're out of your hiatus? <laughs> um, I have more songs uh, that uh, I'm working on and figuring out which song will come first. And I've got so many songs that I've written in the last two years. Um, it's just getting them produced the way that I'm happy with um, before releasing them. So I've got I've got one that's done uh, that could come out, but I'm wondering if there's another song that I should release beforehand. Um, just, you know, some, it's more of a summer vibe. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to, before the end of the year, at least release two more singles. Um, 
and yeah, just sort of keep the keep the momentum going. You want to do videos for them as well? Uh, yeah, I did a video for Hurricane, and I'm still working on the edits, and I'm not so sure that it's good enough. Being the perfectionist, I think all artists can relate to this. Yeah, sure. uh, you want your content to always be strong and competitive and, and really represent you. And so I'm not sure that there will be a video for her again. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I would love to release content around the song. I know there's one that I still have yet to record that I'm happy with. And I already have a live recording video of me playing it in this beautiful church. Mm-hmm. But I'm just waiting for the right time, so, yeah. So what do you mean when you say you want to release content around the song? Well, like a video, um, photographs that sort of match the mood of the song, you know, for Instagram. Okay. It's always, you got to think about the bigger picture, not just the song. Yeah. And then making sure, like, the single cover, the artwork matches you as an artist and also the song. And does it follow a theme throughout what you're doing? Um, as well as sound, it's you know because you gotta you gotta work towards because everyone absorbs things differently visually, audibly. So you gotta work towards thinking about all those things, all the different people that are gonna come in contact with your stuff. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna grab them visually? Are you gonna grab them audibly? You gotta think about those things because there's so much out there that it's so easy for people to go next. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, so. What um, what are the the hardest lessons you've had to learn that uh, you wish you could tell your younger self as an artist? Hmm. Um, or anything particularly positive that you've experienced that you would like to share with younger artists? Just um, keep going. If you believe in what you're doing, you got to just keep going. It's tiring at sometimes, um, but then we have little moments where you know someone comes up to you and says that your music spoke to them or they really connected with your sound, it keeps invigorates you yet again to just keep going and just trusting um, that you've got what it takes in terms of whatever you're creating. Um, you just have to keep believing in yourself and just keep going. Uh, it may not happen the way you think it will be, um, but as, as long as you stay creatively inspired, as long as you are content with what you're doing, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, I think it's probably... Good stuff. Um, what is the go-to place online to find out about you and your music and your upcoming releases? Um, Instagram is definitely my favorite because I'm also quite a visual person. Mm-hmm. Um, so Instagram, which is my name, just at Kira Vizard. Um, yeah, I've only got one YouTube video from my EP released two years ago mm-hmm. uh, for one of the songs on there. And Facebook... I don't, who uses Facebook that much anymore? I don't People's know. Parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool, but um, we'll put your Instagram. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom. Um, thanks so much.